Greetings and welcome back to the workshop. Thank you very much for joining us. Today we're going to carry on with where we left off last time with the valve chests, but this time we're going to make the valve chest covers. It starts with this big piece of rusty steel, which as you can see, I'm cutting up into pieces using an angle grinder. Then with a quick trip down to my local model engineering club to use their grip blaster to get rid of the worst of the rust. And then it's just a simple job of squaring the edges down to size on the milling machine. So I've machined these ends in the vise, but my vise doesn't open big enough to put it in that way. So you've got to do this clever thing, which a lot of these machine vices do. What you find is you can move the jaws if you can get it undone. As you can take the jaws off, we'll give that a clean and then we'll put it on the back. And as you'll see in a minute, that will give us the right distance between. They don't need to be over tight. This should now give me the ability to clamp this in here so I can shave this, this side. It's a neat little trick of a vice that. Somebody has commented on how I don't show how to use a edge finder and how I set up. So if that's something you'd be interested in, then get it in the comments and I'll certainly make a video, if there's enough of you, on uh, how I use one of these edge finders and my DRO. You know, and if there's something special you want me to show with this on how to set something up, then put that in the comments as well. I have now swapped to my face mill and I'm just going to take the very lightest of cuts off the top because we just want to get rid of this scaly finish and make sure that it's completely flat so when it bolts down to the valve chest it's perfect. We're going to take a little bit off the top and the bottom and then we've got some little recesses that I'm going to put in to kind of make it look a bit nicer even though you're probably not going to see it on the steam engine. I think we're going to need another cut on that, that's a bit, <laughs> it's a bit like that. Still you can see the bit, a little bit of pitting. I don't want to take too much off the thickness 
because these are only 10 mil and I think the casting is supposed to be 10 mil so we'll take a little bit more off now see if I can get that little bit there it's just a little tiny See how that is. There's no, no ridge there at all. So we're all good. So that's both of them now, machined on both sides, I've taken off probably at the most 0.75 of a mil, we've now got it totally flat. We are set up, I've found the centre of the plate, I've put the 10 mil cutter in, this is now the middle, uh, I've done a few calculations in my head and I've worked out where I want these little pockets, so I'm going to put those in now. Okay, okay, I get it, you don't need to see it all being done. So we'll just jump to the end. So here we are, just finishing up the last one. I don't know whether I've damaged the tool, or, or this side's a bit harder than the other side, but I seem to have terrible trouble machining this side. And it's left a nasty burr. But it's all right. We have ways of sorting that out. But the pockets are in. This one, yeah, really nasty burr. There's a bit of a burr on there. Probably tool, probably worn tool edges. Still feel sharp, we'll have a look. And for my next party trick, I'm gonna need some of these. This one in particular. Yes, this will soon make light work of those pesky bears. And if you didn't know you could do this with a countersink, then you're welcome. Because you can do this with a countersink.
obviously I'm only taking off a little bit at a time it could probably take a bit more than I'm taking but I'm just trying to take my time because it is machining a little bit more in the corners than on the side because of the diameter difference with the end of the tool Eventually, after a lot of machining, you'll end up with two barn doors or things that look like barn doors or cupboard doors or something like that. I'm not sure what's gone on because if you look at them both, one side has nice machine marks and the other side has rough machine marks. So I have no idea what's gone on there. Maybe that side of the metal, because they, did a, they didn't come off the same piece of metal. Maybe there was a fault hard bit, I don't know. Um, but yeah, weird. Now all I've got to do is put the holes in. And that's the easy bit. All I've got to do is clamp these covers to the valve chests and drill through from the other side. Easy peasy. As far as these covers are concerned, they're done. Finito, finished. Well, maybe one slight thing. I might take them to the club and sandblast them, see if I can get rid of some of their machine marks. But it's not gonna matter. Once they've got heat resistant paint on, which is as thick as tar, the detail's all gonna be gone and uh, you won't see anything anyway. Now, what we've got to do next is we've got to take these valve chests and we've got to fit those to the cylinders. I don't really know how yet. I'm sure somebody will put something in the comments.
Just like that and they're in that's it I think that's everything on these cylinders that needs to be done all I need now is some studs to check that they go on which it should do because we've marked through every one just to make sure with it bolted on so I've nipped down to my model engineering club and given the covers a quick sandblast to basically try and get rid of some of the machine marks which it seems to have done and it's made a very nice finish to be honest I'm quite tempted to do the edges of the valve chest cover but we'll see how we go with that I think it'll give a nice key to the paint that we need to put on with all the threaded holes in all we've got to do now is make some studs but we'll do that next time I'll see you in the next video then Laders. yeah they've uh, they've come out rather well <laughs>